Yeah, it's, it's possible. We've seen these go up in the, in the Bakersfield area, the high desert area. Um, and, and what we will try to do is we'll try to stay as high as we can to get you a signal back uh, for as long as we can. But if it continues uh, past the grapevine down into the, the Central Valley area, that, that can become an issue if it continues up, uh, up northbound. But we're going to stay with it as long as we can and keep you updated on this. And right now, we're, we should have quite a ways here before uh, before uh, that happens. But we are approaching Pyramid Lake here. And I missed that last information coming from the desk. But we're uh, it's still coming up on Templin Highway here at probably 60 miles an hour. And really, the only one he's passing right now are the semi-trucks. All the passenger vehicles are, I can't even see one inside, but all semis that are going up this very steep grade, as we all know, going up towards the Great Line here, approaching uh, Templin and, and Pyramid Lake. So the only ones are really passing, and I can tell you, not passing them very quickly, um, uh, the northbound five are, are the semi-trucks. Again, I don't see a passenger vehicle in sight. Well, yeah, there's, there's, there's small communities uh, up here through, you know, the Pyramid and obviously up near uh, Quail Lake um, area. There, there's sporadic, small, small areas. But, uh, yeah, this is basically, as, as we all know, the transition between here in Bakersfield and Sacramento, San, San Francisco. And, uh, not a lot of commuters or people that live that way, are, well, I shouldn't say that. A lot of people are commuting very far distances these days. Uh, but uh, yeah, so most most of it is uh, just mostly people transitioning uh, into into uh, areas further away. Okay. That just happened, uh, David and Alan, just a matter of seconds ago, right at Templin Highway. And there was a black and white in the center divider later across the fast lane. And what they are is they have these, the system where they can throw it out there and then pull it back on the string so the officers in pursuit directly behind the suspect will not hit the spike strips. But it appeared that the suspect saw it coming and swerved around it. And that's another disadvantage for that technique when they're actually going this slow. It's, it's easier for them to see and avoid those uh, those uh, spike strips. So that, that was the plan here for the suspect. And the it apparently, uh, apparently worked. Well, I I'm sure they will. Uh, maybe in a position that they can uh, utilize more cover, uh, maybe be more, uh, utilize more concealment, if you will. Uh, that's something they may try here. Uh, again, if that is coming up, we'll be sure to let you know after it happens or the attempt happens. We don't want to give anything away for the police tactics here. But um, yeah, it, it's difficult. It's a very difficult th thing to do, especially at these speeds. They see them a mile away. So uh, they definitely need concealment and cover in order to do it where the suspect won't see them. But uh, this time it, it didn't work. They did, they did, not, uh, it did, not, did not work. They went right by it and swerved around it. Right. So we're going to come on. We're going to we're transitioned over to the west side of the freeway as we continue northbound. We're going to try to get a better look here on the sunlit side of the pursuit. Try to get you a little better look at the driver. See if we can't see him. You just saw his hand come out that left side window here. 
Uh, we are on the five here in the same speeds. We're looking at about 65 miles per hour, approaching Lake Pyramid here in probably another five, 10 minutes with the speed, maybe 20. Uh, I'm kidding, but uh, continuing here. But again, we don't want to make light of this because we don't know. The thing is, yes, if it's just, if it truly is just a vandalism suspect that is just wanted for trashing the hotel room, that, that this is, we can make light of it. But the thing is, we just don't know. And what's, what's interesting to me is that CHP is being very, very careful. They're being very careful with the suspect. They're not being very aggressive with the suspect. They're not trying to uh, do that pit maneuver. They did try one spike, but they're giving him a, a very wide berth. So there may be information, again, that we're not aware of that they've been told, but they know that we don't know. So I want to be careful that we don't make too much light of it because we just really don't know what the suspect is running for. There may be something going on that we just don't have information on. And that's always, and we've seen that before many, many times uh, in these pursuits, that we find out well after the fact what exactly they were running for. Or in situations just like this, we were not absolutely not knowing why he was running. Very strange situation here. We'll continue to see uh, what happens with the pursuit and what it, how it all turns out after he's in custody. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, again, we're getting a closer look at the suspect here, David, and it looks like uh, male white, or maybe uh, Hispanic, very difficult to tell, dark hair, uh, pale complexion, dark shirt on, but uh, again, we, when usually in these types of pursuits, we see a lot of animated uh, uh, activity in them, they're moving around, their hands moving around, uh, their heads looking left and right and up, but you can see that, uh, a little bit of movement there, but trying to get a better look for our viewers here, but uh, very calm, very collected, and uh, he just, he's just driving along like there's nothing going on, like there's no one behind him. But yeah, they're very aware of who's overhead, uh, and they know, again, it's just a matter of time that they're gonna be taken into custody. Sometimes we've seen a situation, again, not saying that that's a situation here. Sometimes suspects will ingest any uh, uh, illegal narcotics or contraband they may have on board and try to ingest that so that that evidence is not uh, retrieved by officers when they are taken into custody, so we've seen that happened before again not saying that's a situation here but sometimes that is what's happening but uh, uh, again it's just continuing here at these very slow speeds here it looks like he's getting over to the right lane which is unusual so we're going to pull out just a little bit start to slow him down a little bit um, to see exactly this is something we have not seen him do he's been like he's likes to stay in that left lane that number one lane and it looks like he is slowing down just a little bit we're looking at about 50 miles an hour here uh, just coming up to the south end of Lake Pyramid on the northbound path That's right, David, and, and it is a hot topic issue, especially in the law enforcement communities. There is a lot of training that's done for officers on how to handle suspects that have uh, mental illness and how, how they react differently than a normal person would and how to react to that. So it, they may not react the same way a normal uh, a person that does not have these illnesses react. So it becomes, it becomes a very difficult situation for officers to deal with and how and determining what type, of, what type of condition that they're in. How to best how to best deal with that particular condition because uh, where you might deal with something one way in this particular condition uh, a suspect may like may not like being talked to in a certain tone or, or, or certain words or there's so many different combinations of things that can set suspects off like this so they may have information regarding this person's condition or their background or their medical history that's dictating the tactics that they use again I go back to the supervisors in these pursuits it's their job to uh, 
to ingest all this information and try to come up with some kind of a solution that is going to keep everybody safe, including the suspect, which, uh, which is often uh, not looked upon. They want the suspect to be taken in custody and not hurt or injured or no one else. And that's, that's the main goal. And right now, time is on the officer's side. He's not driving dangerously or erratically or endangering the lives of, of, of uh, other motorists or pedestrians at this particular point. And so it, the time is on their side. So they're letting the suspect dictate the actions, maybe trying to communicate with him, uh, maybe using a specific uh, expert that may be an expert if he has a condition in that particular condition and try to talk him down if you would to just giving it up. It almost looks like it almost looks like he is on the phone. It looks appears like his right hand is up to his face and the left hand is on the wheels, which means northbound on the five, Vista del Lago, right of the impairment lake. But we're up pretty high right now, trying to stay out of the way as the terrain rises and there's really, really hot. So what you're seeing is some of those atmospherics going through the shot. So it looks it may look a little blurry, but we're shooting a very long way away and the reflection of the sun is helping to try to mitigate that. But he's definitely on the phone, which could be a, a good sign that he's talking to, we're going to try to get rid of that reflection, talking to family or talking to the officers. But uh, so that's a good sign. At least he's talking to someone to try to get him, uh, get him uh, to maybe give this up. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yep, sorry, got, uh, guys, we were uh, communicating with the desk trying to get information to them. Could you repeat that last question, David? Or Alan? Well, yeah, I mean, there are some cars now that, that are actually, uh, that have that ability. Now, now, if this is the suspect's vehicle, I, I would I would think it might be an issue with, in order to do something like that, you would maybe have to have the registered owner's, registered owner's permission to do such a thing. And since if this driver is the registered owner, and turning off that vehicle may, be, uh, may cause it to, uh, it, 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 there's a lot of questions that that, that, that brings up. Um, you know, it, it, yeah. Yeah, it looks like we just passed another spike strip, and it looks like he swerved to avoid it. But uh, yeah, yeah, it brings up a lot of those questions, and, and it would be really nice if officers had the ability just to call someone to turn it off. But uh, 
uh, being in legally, can they do it? Secondly, if they can do it, is it something they want to do based on their knowledge of the suspect's activities and uh, what his demeanor is? But uh, so, so many things come into uh, play, and that's why I keep bringing up that supervisor in the pursuit and the watch commander back at the station making these decisions. And, and at this at this time, it, it might be just better for them to let him run out of grass or, or kind of just stop. But, but all those things would be nice uh, if they have the ability to do that and actually just shut it down, uh, which is something that could happen. And we'll, we'll see if that does happen. No one know if it's running out of gas or someone actually shut it down. But um, it brings up a lot of questions on how and when the police can actually utilize something like that in, 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 in different situations. top of that, sorry to interrupt David, but on top of that as well is what, how is the car going to react when you shut it down? Are you going to lose control of the power steering? Is that going to cause the ability for the, him not to control the vehicle and cause an accident with injury? All things the police would constantly think about weighing the liability of taking a suspect into custody and the liability of, of, of hurting him or someone else. Show, show the chippy too. Show the chippy since he's talking about it. Uh, ten minutes. What'd you say? Uh, I can't hear him. What did you say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just passed Highway 138, and that, that is something that uh, what CHP does that most agencies don't. They continuously uh, swap out their units, uh, not only for the vehicles, for the officers. So it, it's not, it's, uh, it's very uh, typical to see them 
uh, every, uh, it depends on the area, it depends on the mileage, depends on the speed. The supervisors will actually swap out the units and get fresh officers, fresh vehicles into that pursuit and continuously rotate them through as they move through different areas. One other thing I want to mention here as we pass on the northbound 5, past the 138, coming up on the Lebec area probably another 10 minutes ago, we're looking up into the area of the, uh, uh, into the, uh, the Central Valley just as we come down out of the grapevine, we're seeing weather. We're seeing what looks to be some thunderstorms, some heavy rain. So it'll be interesting to see as it comes down the grapevine what happens with that, uh, where that weather is, and that'll obviously be dependent on how long we can stay with the pursuit. But uh, right now the speeds have uh, really, really dropped off. We're doing uh, about 50 miles an hour right now in Air 7 HD, and so is the suspect we are, we are uh, mimicking or uh, uh, tra tracking their speed. So uh, again, not very fast right now. It seems like the, he's getting slower and slower as he comes up the hill. Could be an indication that the vehicle is starting going out of fuel. That's something that Dave probably is more of an expert than I am on. But typically when you see them really start to slow down, it's usually the first indication that they may be getting a little low on the go juice here. Uh, we'll see at least three or four CHP officers still in pursuit here northbound as we approach the Lebec area. Or dust. Yeah, interesting what you're talking about the lightning, Dallas. In fact, I don't want to take the shot off, but I'm looking ahead in the San Joaquin Valley, just in the bottom of the belt of the basin as we climb up for signal purposes, that we look to see what appears to be a small fire out there putting up a lot of smoke, and that could be a uh, result of maybe a lightning strike out there. It's hard to tell if that's dust or a fire, but it is going across the 5 freeway. It's actually out to the west, and the wind blowing that towards the 5 freeway to the east. Looks like the freeway is completely obscured here, so it's, it's interesting to see where the where the rain begins and the smoke from the fire uh, starts, but we'll show you that when we get a chance to as we continue up here. We're approaching the city of Lebec here, Fraser Park area, at the top of the, uh, the grapevine here as we uh, come up to uh, El Tajon, the Tajon Pass, Area, and then we start coming down the freeway. In fact, I can see the 5 freeway right before it turns into 99, and the visibility, it absolutely goes 0, 0, which means I can't even see the freeway. It disappears into almost what looks like a, a haboo, like a dust storm, but it appears to be, it could be dust, it could be smoke, I'm not real sure. In fact, did you guys give us the okay? I don't think the suspect's doing anything. We can give you a quick look at that, but you let me know as we continue here northbound, but it, it might be, it might be dust. It's uh, hard to tell right now. Okay. Wide, wide, pan left, wide, pan left. Pan left, pan, pan left, pan left. Yeah. Yeah. 
and we're gonna pan right, Dallas. We're gonna show you where the five freeway. You pan right, Rob. We're gonna show you right where the five goes, and right there, pushing. You, you can see right where the five disappears into that dust. So that's where the suspect's heading. And we're gonna come back to the pursuit, but you can see. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we don't see a lot of those here, uh, in, but a lot of those obviously in Phoenix, as Dallas mentioned, not so much up here, maybe up in this area, we, which we don't get to very much. We're gonna try to get back on this pursuit here. Uh, but uh, yeah, if he continues on in that direction, uh, where, where are we gonna go here? We're still looking for him. You guys got him? Come, back, come on back down, down your right, Rob. Back down your right, and we'll get the pursuit. Uh, that five freeway right before it comes into the 99, that is, it goes literally right into zero visibility. So that is going to be a concern for us, obviously, to fly in. We'll see when we get closer that way. Maybe we can climb over the top, and then we can see out the other side. We'll see how far we can continue into the San Joaquin Valley for signal. Uh, but we'll continue to climb here as we get back on the pursuit, which has not changed at all here. We are, again, coming up on the Lebeck area here. Same speeds. It looks like he may be picking up the speed just a little bit. But uh, same speeds here as we approach this Haboob here in the uh, San Joaquin Valley. we get the further we can go and we can get over the top well if we, if we can see before we go over the top of it we can see that it's if we can see the other side and that's what i want to see if we can we don't obviously obviously or we go on the east side and try to go back to that it may be maybe just small i should call but you let me know but that's why I'm hoping to get high enough to see past it, right? Yep, yep. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, sorry, I missed the question. The desk was talking. Can you repeat that uh, question? Yeah. Yeah. We're discuss discussing with the pilot right now. We're going to continue here just a little bit further as we go down the 5 freeway in San Joaquin. We're going to go up to the edge of it, take a look at it, and see if it's going to be safe for us to transition. We may have to move a little bit further east, but again, we're feeling the winds from the shear in that area. Again, nothing serious yet, but we'll make a... Yeah, we'll make a go or no go here as we get a little closer, uh, but uh, we're, we're talking that over right now on our show. Show the vehicle. There we go. Go tighten up on it. Go. Go for it.
Ready to run the times or more. Yeah, uh, we're, we're climbing and we're continuing north. We're discussing. We'll, we'll see. See if we can't get see see on the other side of it for one. And uh, again, I don't even know how much further we can go for signal anyway. And plus, plus fuel too. We may have to make Bakersfield as a, a, fuel, a fuel stop at this point. All right. What's that? Okay. Well, I can see, I mean, uh, it's your call again. I'm, not, I'm just, I can see, uh, we go that way and then kind of look that way. Do you think that's a possibility? Yeah, I'll try that. Just start going off that way. Don't worry about the tree, just cross over. Watch your levels there while you're going. You want to see the haboob again, guys? Okay. Try to get some speed ahead on this other cross behind so we don't get too toppy. Well, we're coming up to the edge of it right now. We're, uh, we're up well above it, and uh, Marcus, uh, Marcus, our pilot here, we're making a decision, as are all the other news helicopters here. Just getting a feel if we're feeling any of the effects of the wind shear that's causing this movement right now. So far, we've had a little bumpy up here, but we can actually see through the other side uh, it, where it's at. It's very, very thick off to the west. Look, it almost looks like the winds are from the west, uh, out in the west, blowing east here. So we're going to try to move a little bit further to the east um, we see that thunderstorm Dallas was talking about. That's the one that's moving south and east. So we're trying to stay between the Haboob and the thunderstorm. And uh, it, uh, it actually is not too terrible right now. We can actually see the other side of the uh, five. We have more zoom. Uh -huh. Do we have to descend? Okay, hold your altitude because of the signal. Yeah. 
every bit of 10,000 we're gonna do it because we're gonna have to for signal purpose. Well, there's your dust, guys. Uh, we're calling you business. Are you asking for more altitude, right? No, we're 9,000 calling. Hey guys, it looks like th they're actually into that dust storm right now. So you see how that visibility has changed. We're on the leading edge of that haboob. The, the thicker, the heavier stuff is much further to our west. But you can see that visibility going. They may use this as an opportunity, if you can see it, to maybe to sneak up on a suspect and try to get that pit maneuver in. In fact, it looks like they're closing in. Robbie, if you could double up on that. Difficult to see here. But uh, again, the visibility really bad. Barely see through all that dust from that haboob. But uh, they are continuing here. And we'll see. We're coming up on the inner uh, section between the 5 and the 99. So he can stay on the 5 or possibly jump on that 99 northbound uh, through the, through the desert area here. But it looks like the chippy's kind of creeping up on him. And again, we're up at about 9,000 feet above this haboob. Uh, very difficult to see, but it looks like he's trying to close in on him. And we'll see if we can't make this picture any better. We slow up just a little bit to see if we can not see this. But my, he's going to get into some be better visibility here in just a second. He's going through the thick of it right now. And they should pop out with some better visibility any second here. But again, we're in the clear. We're north of the Haboob. It's, and it's moving from the west to the east. And it's actually converging with a thunderstorm, which is on the right side. So we have the Haboob on the left side of our helicopter. We've got the thunderstorm on the right side of our helicopter about four or five miles out. And they're converging on each other. And right now, we don't see the pursuit. But hopefully, it'll pop into view here in just another second. Yeah, we're up here, and then part of that is to get above uh, the shear, and uh, the other part of it is to maintain the signal back to the station. Uh, our receive sites are not geared. This is outside of the uh, KBC here in the Kern County area, but uh, we're trying to maintain that signal back to our receive sites in the Los Angeles area, which is quite a haul right now, so we're maintaining this altitude to continue bringing you these pictures. sure if that's an exit or that's actually the transition onto the 99. I think it may be the transition onto the 99. Uh, so we're trying to look back and see. We'll tell you shortly if that terminates at a 
kind of straight here, but uh, it almost looks like that may be the transition road that either goes to the five and back, uh, and back underneath the 99, I'll tell you in a second here. We're so far away right now, and, uh, and I'm looking out the window here seven, and we're probably four or five miles away because of all the, uh, uh, oh, there's, there's just gonna be a pit. Oh no, that's just, a, that's just another vehicle. I thought that might've been a white CHP vehicle, but I guess, uh, yeah, but we see that, that the uh, the CHP is actually giving him a lot of room here. I believe that's him off to the left. Oh, Rob, I'm not really sure. Okay, that's him. So CHP's actually backed up quite a bit. Uh, I don't see them anywhere in the vicinity. Um, that's very interesting. So we'll keep an eye on that here. It looks like he may be staying on the 5 freeway. Yeah. yeah. There was a, a little... There's a section, I'm sorry to interrupt you, there's a section of the Haboot that's a little thicker here, but it doesn't last very long. In fact, we're gonna try to maneuver the helicopter a little bit further. Not only that, we're shooting into the sun, which doesn't really help, uh, but uh, what's interesting about this is we try to get the visual on the suspect here, man, is that CHP is backed up uh, tremendously from the suspect, and giving him a very, very wide berth here. Yeah, we're, we're going to try to get in a better position here to, to see that. Um, it, it, with all the dust and the light, we want to make sure we're on the right vehicle. But I did see back, the CHP had backed up along, and it's very difficult, especially when the CHP's not behind the suspect vehicle, to stay with the suspect vehicle. But we're pretty sure we made that transition. We're fairly certain that's him. And you may have a better look at the larger monitors here, uh, but I'm pretty certain that's him. But we don't see a CHP anywhere near him right now. Now's your chance to find it, Rob. I know he had a way hit. Sure. Okay, where's the car? Okay. Yeah, well, we want to make sure we've got the right sauce, but we're getting some, about, some uh, com information here that uh, we're trying to verify here. Again, when he got in that dust storm, that we uh, kind of lost him, but we're going to try to find him here. But, so give us a minute or two, and we'll get back to you with, uh, with the suspect here. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Go too tight. I can't believe you lost it. Where are the other helicopters? That's him. That's him. For sure. Yeah, he's on the off ramp. Okay, don't get too toppy now. Here we got him. He's on the off ramp, guys. I have to figure out what off ramp that is. Where is that? That could be Sandrini. I don't see anybody yet. Pull on a little bit so I can see where that is just for a street shape. Quickly, quickly. Oh, okay, that's square. No, well, maybe. We didn't. That's definitely him. 
Well, that's what I meant, yeah. Is that the 99 or the 5? That's the 5. And that looks like it may be Corpus Road, if I'm not mistaken. Or is that the 99? I don't, I don't know. I don't even, I need to know where it is. Oh, well, we're really tough. Because we're like right over it. He looks like he's off at uh, Maricopa Highway, we believe. You sure, we sure that's him, right, Rob? Yes, we're getting really toppy. Okay. Well, we're we're going to go to Bakersfield, right? Okay, just make sure we get enough to get there. Okay, come on back in. Go tight. We're really toppy. you got to do something. Okay, he's in that parking. Okay, Maricopa Highway, and he's at that station. We're really toppy. Push in, push in. Give me the name of that station. I know, because we're right over it. You need to get some distance. I understand. Please make it happen. Chevron Station on Maricopa. That's him right there. Watch it. Hold your ass. If you can. If you can park it, try it. I don't know if you can. Push in tight. See if it gets out. Okay. Yeah, we got to get into the wind. And not going for the north because we'll lose him. He's just sitting there to see. We'll come back into it. He didn't, I didn't see him get out, did you? I don't think the Jay, I don't think the police know where he's at. We maybe get on the air and tell them. Well, right, right. right. Is everybody else on the same thing we are right now? Okay. That was a bad call. Okay, tell him to switch to Oat. Tell him to go to Oat. Saddle's not working. Saddle's a bad call. If they can switch to Oat.
news, live reports from around Kern County, and your latest weather with Storm Shield Doppler. From the KERO studios in downtown Bakersfield, this is 23 ABC News. Well, they're back. Scary clowns showing up all around the country. Bakersfield police now concerned about threats some of them are making now. Good evening. I'm Tim Callahan. And I'm Jessica Harrington in for Jackie Ochoa. We'll get to those creepy clowns in a minute, but first we're getting word there's rain coming down in Kern County. And not just the rain, wind also kicking up dangerous dust. We're going to turn now to Jesus Lopez in the Kern County 23 with the latest conditions. Jesus? Yes, well, before we start talking about the rain, let's confirm that there was not a tornado that touched down here in Kern County. It was a dust devil. Therefore, let's just start now with the rain. The last six hours, we just saw the rain pulling it into our mountain community as forecasted yesterday, but it's moving to the south central. Bakersfield will remain dry. There has been lightning reported and also there's been some hail by Arvin. Now let's continue and see the latest with our storm shield Doppler. We just see some lightning strikes by Arvin and south of Arvin. The actual movement of the storm is actually slow at around 10 miles per hour. It's moving we're, uh, we're very, very high because Glacier Park and that will be the movement of the storm. The, the, the thing about the storm is that it's moving at a, such a slow pace that we can see some flash floods in our mountain community. So we just have to be careful with that. Flash floods happen at any time. And this was a report of hail by Arvin earlier today. It was very small, around a pea size. The storm is actually moving to the south. Like I just mentioned, it's moving towards Lamont and the Tejon Ranch area. We can see some lightning just west of the Stallion Springs. We see that lightning to moderate and heavy rain in that area. Again, the storm is moving at around 10 miles per hour. It's a slow moving storm. It can cause some flash floods, so we just have to be careful right there at the roads. Here in downtown Bakersfield, we can see some blowing dust. This is a live view from Kernville Airport. We just saw that earlier there was some rain there. Here's a picture sent by Carrie Williams. This is a view towards the airport. We can see that rain impacting Kern River Valley area as well. Here in our downtown view, we just see some blowing dust at the distance and we can see those clouds, but hey, it's dry here. The majority of the rain is staying towards the east and is traveling to the south. Now back to you guys. All right, thanks, Jesus. And here in Bakersfield, just about an hour ago, this dust storm rolled in. Take a look at these pictures just getting into our newsroom, causing a lot of traffic issues downtown. This shot from just about an hour ago as those winds kicked up, causing that dust to move into the metro area. We want to go now live to our exclusive Traffic Now system. In just a moment, we're going to switch this over from our uh, Kerncast 23 to our weather computer. And that's because there are some traffic issues to report tonight. Out on Highway 99, we have an issue right around Panama Lane. We see some slowing there. If we can uh, scroll that down, uh, you see through Bakersfield, the red there near Panama Lane. It's unclear if there's a crash, but we are getting reports that there is dust in the area, so that could be causing some serious slowdowns and some serious concerns. I want to turn now to Ivan Rodriguez, who is live on Highway 99. Ivan, what are you seeing out there, and what are the latest conditions? I'm standing here on the 99 South, just right before Hosking Avenue. On the other side, the 99 North is still closed. Bakersfield Fire is telling me that there's about 10 cars that got into an accident on both sides of the highway. Behind me, the tow truck is clearing away the vehicles. When we got out here, it was so dusty, it was hard to see. I could barely open my eyes when I got out here, and that's part of the problem for why these cars got into this accident right now. Paramedics were taking people into the stretchers and they're pulling them away. Cars have just left, or if they're being pulled off to the side. It looks like the 99 North. Copa being the first exit uh, south over the 5 and the 99 merge. I'm correcting north over the 5 and the 99 merge. Yeah. I have to tell you something. Maybe, yeah.
Yes. Yep, absolutely. Well, yeah, going into the Chevron with his backpack, which is unusual. Uh, not sure if he's going to go maybe change inside, but what I found very interesting, we're going to try to get a better position for you guys, is he pulled up the gas pumps and he got out of the vehicle to fuel, and he realized that the gas fuel, not, uh, uh, the gas fuel area for the vehicle was on the wrong side of the vehicle. So then there he's back in the vehicle. Well, then he, get, then he had to move the vehicle over to the right side, and he got out to look like he was starting to put fuel in, but I'm not sure if he did. If he did, he did it very quickly. So what he's done is he put a backpack on, he walked to the store, and then he walked back into the vehicle just a few seconds ago, as you saw live from here from Air 7 hg Not really sure why that was, whether he took something, it very possibly he took something out of the backpack and put it in the garbage can here. That's something that officers will definitely review, maybe getting rid of evidence there in the trash can, out of the backpack and in, but he's back in the car. It does not appear that he's got a, a gas nozzle in the vehicle right now, but just sitting there uh, here on Mar Highway 166, Maricopa Highway, just west of the 5 Freeway. Well, I'm, we're so we're so high right now. We're at 10,500 feet, and we're trying to get out so much dust around here. We're trying to get eyes outside, but I don't want to pull out too wide. In fact, maybe we can to take a quick look. We'll pull out wide. Uh, Rob Luckman, see, we can't. There's a CHP right there, pulling in, and we're gonna. He's probably gonna deploy right behind the vehicle. So, uh, and we'll see what happens here. Oops. Uh, now, this is a high-risk felony stop. Guns are out. Uh, telling commands, it looks like the suspect's, uh, he's, he's giving up, so uh, whatever he may have had, oh, that's not good, that's not good at all. Yeah, so now he's complying, poning himself out, officers giving him commands, hopefully some backing units will get here, but what they're going to want to do is they're going to want to go to the front of that store and look at what he possibly took out of that backpack, because he wasn't there very long, went to the front of the store, maybe hid it somewhere, put it in a trash can, I'm sure there's security video at that gas station that'll show exactly what he did, but uh, very possible that he did something with evidence very quickly. He wasn't in that area very long. Got out of our sight and walked back to the car with the backpack and put it back into the car. So right now that officer's put out a backup call. He's going to wait for some additional units here to arrive, telling him he's got the suspect at one point. Wait for them to arrive and to take him to custody. There's his backup unit. They're going to help out, maybe get one or two additional units here before they help him out to take him into custody. Very interesting to see uh, if they try to gather that evidence. If that was even the case, but it was very odd that he took his backpack out, walked under that area in front of the store for a second, and then took the backpack back to the car, uh, obviously concealing whatever he did with that backpack. But again, didn't see him fuel up, but uh, it looks like CHP has got the suspect proned out right now, just waiting for maybe another officer or two to take him into custody. Oops, get here.